Hi folks, it's Rye Guy. In this episode, this is gonna be programming the NCON through the wizard on the computer. This is gonna be the main portion of the footage with a little extra here and there. And once again, I would really like to thank Brett from NCON for for the lesson at hand and I really look forward to seeing him again because I think he's going to do it one more time with us on a KX080-5 that's coming in and I really look forward to it. So hope you all enjoy and have a great day. Thank you. If you don't, if you don't put it up here and you put it there, what, he, what happens is the machine is always running. When he reaches to go activate this, they always hit this. Oh, I got you. Yeah. And it drops that boom down. I mean, it's, it just happens. I mean, he may be <clears> good <throat> and get his hand in there just right, but if you put it up here, no, that looks out like of a, the way, uh, he's got total functionality with perfect. this without hitting his hand, yep. and it's out of the way. And he's got that vision, because he's got very little bit of sight right there. Yep. And if you put something right here, you're blocking sight to that track. So don't try to block any vision. No. That's a perfect place to I put like it on that. this machine. I like that. We want to keep that so up. So with that being done, what you do is you cock them both somewhat in. You kind of want to look at the way the factory is. Yeah, you, want... you look at those, the factories are slightly cocked in. You want them to feel you good. You want it to where your thumb is just even. Get them both about identical, where your arms are flat. Everything is sitting good. And you're good right there. Then just crank them down. Not just an... I definitely suggest you do it with the machine off. <laughs> yeah. Well, because this one you can't do it with the uh, arm up. So you'll you'll definitely be throwing that dipper. And that's you'll just throw a... the stick straight up if you do this with it on. So you only want to go a couple of turns. You want it tight enough, but don't we, tighten it to where it's tight. We don't need it right tight there. like those fittings back right there. Right there is perfect. Right there. Once we feel some right friction. There. Now... See, right there you get this and you mash it to your hand. Now, the reason for these stirrups is because you can operate with your fingers and not have to grip the joystick. That's the saddle. It holds you in there, a the saddle. saddle. There you go. And if you don't want the saddles, it does come with those pads I saw. I've never had a customer put them on. Sounds good to me. and that'll be done. Finished. Thank you. Oh, didn't ask you with enough time. Well, there you go. If you do restart it within a certain amount of time, I do believe you're up. Oh, the lever.
don't have a grapple or we don't have something there, yep. still put it to that thumb to that thumb wheel on the top. Okay. So you have to put extra two up on top. Yeah, I'll have you take a picture of this in a second. Okay. QSC goes to LD2. So these are only five things that you want to do. Rotation, tilt, invert tilt, extra one, invert extra one, extra two plane, and QSC LD2. It has to be mandatory to be put there. Put it anywhere else, this pad will not work. You gotta put the QSC there? You have to. Okay. See, there's no button for that. There's a button here for that one, see there? Yeah. That's the shift button. And then the menu and lock button down here is there. Okay. There is no button for the LD2. That's up here. When you push both these buttons at once, that light will turn green. Okay. So if you want, we won't go back to this page. You guys, I don't know how you're going to have to move it to get the picture. Oh, so this would be like the setup I'll need to this know. This is the setup. This you have is the setup when you're getting when you're finalizing your. <clears throat> now, once you're done with that, you go directly to the wizard because everything else is functional. Matter of fact, let's just test it real quick. Just cock your bucket back. All you're looking for is the strap to come out. And on the 206, you're not going to get the strap. The 206B doesn't have it. But what you want to do, we're just going to test it for unlocking the bucket. I do not have the ground pressure sensor enabled yet. So it'll light up right away. She unlocked. See that? So it did let us unlock? Oh, yeah, it unlocked. Yeah. We didn't have to put the ground pressure on? No, I don't have it enabled yet. I just said that. Oh, you don't have it enabled yet. Yeah. So see, she's unlocked. That, lock it back up. There, she works perfect. I guess what we can do, and that'll shut off as soon as it registers. So, what we should do now, before we go to the wizard, let's do the ground pressure sensor. So, let's go to the QSC page. Tap on the QPM. QPM. Now, all these will light up, the ones that I already have enabled. What we're going to do now, is turn on the ground pressure sensor. Let's go right down to there, that little thing like your Watch cell phone. Watch this right here. Just click on it. Click on and it. And turn the ground pressure sensor on. Go to That's going to light this up. That's going to light that up. Then we go over here. And select. Select. Analog. You just give me a second. We're probably going to go to the this. I need to gain some pressure here. See how it immediately went to the boom pressure that's on there right now. So what we do barely set it to the ground. See it says current boom pressure right now? Yeah. You want to set that to the ground and relieve some pressure. Get this down to the double digits. There we are, like that right there, about 19. Sounds good. That's a good pressure. They barely have to touch it to the ground. Then just click it. Set Put as ground pressure. Now this is, you'll watch this. See that change right there? Yeah. And then the 140, leave that alone because watch what happens when I pick the boom up. I could lower it a little bit. I could lower it to about 120. Okay. Because it's at 140, boom pressure empty empty bucket we got about a hundred and about 115 bar right now so just do this right here click it we're gonna go 120 so 
So just do 120 and then hit set. That'll change this value right there to 120. Now that you got everything set on here, save it. We're not saving everything to the cabin module up here? Everything saved to the cabin module. Now, here's the, here's the trick. Get this bucket set up like that. Have it about two inches above the ground. Now, when you go to activate the coupling system, you're gonna push the first, just stab the first button. The arrow right here is going to light up. It's pointing towards the ground. It's got a little ground, a okay. little wavy ground thing. When you do that, so you're telling that's you're when you have to touch it to the ground and when you satisfy the ground pressure sensor, both unlock buttons will light up. Pick the bucket back up. Don't just stab the buttons because then yeah. you grind all that metal together. Yeah, I got you. So, so hit one button, down hit one pressure, button, down lift pressure, up with two pick inches, back up, and then both press buttons. and hold. Press have, and hold. You have to hold. So both buttons let's see at the how same she's time. operating. All right, good. First one, see how she lit up? All right. Little too much. I got. I got to raise it. I got to raise the ground pressure. You got to raise the ground pressure. And then she opens right up. And once she's open, it'll stay open as long as you leave it that way. Okay. I'm gonna try it again. And then to close it, you just pull buttons you, to and you right have to it. hold it. Have to hold it. Hold it until she stops. Perfect. So let me try this again because I had to push a little too hard for that. So we're gonna raise the ground pressure up. No, ah, that no, that's good. There, I just it just activated it the first time. Okay. Probably had to get some fluid through the line. Yeah, exactly. Let it shut off. Let's do it again. I just want to barely touch it to the ground. Yep. It is. That's Perfect. fine. That's fine. But once you start something, always complete it because if you wait. Has like this one's like 15 seconds, it'll abort. See how it aborted? Yeah. Because it's thinking, oh, he's not serious, didn't really want to take it off. So once you hit that button once, you gotta hit the down pressure. Keep moving. Then you can wait. Keep yeah, moving. Because you only yeah. got 15 seconds, it'll abort. Mm. If you hit the first one, yeah, and you don't move within 15 mm. seconds, yep. she'll abort. Okay. She'll stop working on it. So let's go over to the wizard. Now, did anybody happen to take time? Remember when I put the computer out there? I think Rob did. He did. Just to read through this. Just to, this explains what the wizard does. It'll mm -hmm. tell you one roller is activation, the other one's adjust. Is what it's telling you. And it's also telling you what A and B functions are. B function sends fluid down the left, return up the right. Take the tail rotator off, switch to shear mode, hold the button in for 10 seconds. It switches, that's operator information. Yep. You don't need to know it's that. It's okay. Um, so with that being said, as soon as I put next, I'm ready to start. Okay. So what we'll do, hit next. Now we're ready to do maximum and minimum. See, that's way too fast. Way too fast for a minimum. Yeah. So you adjust it. Watch this hand. This is no longer tilt. That's my adjust. See how it's moving these back and forth? Come here, Jerm. Watch how that's moving that back and forth. So you use this one to move it. Now that's pretty good. I like it a little slower than that. But you don't want it jumping. See how it's jumping? Tiny bit. Push full bore. This is a minimum movement. That's full bore on that. See, that's full bore. That's all the way roller? All the way with the roller. But you're you setting the minimum roll. here? I'm setting the minimum with this hand. With that I'm, one? I'm, this is the minimum side, this is the so maximum I side. I guess what I'm asking is you're setting a minimum once. So minimum 
hope so after we're done programming when you just start touching the trigger that says that's, that's your dead band that, that's, that's what i'm asking yeah. that's your dead band right there okay right. so then hit the next one now we're going to start doing full rotations which i can tell we're going to be way fast right now here's your clock right down there there's your timer okay and as long as you got your thumb moving this if the timer's gonna stay going so if, when you say okay it went around but it went a little past you got to do it again okay so what you do is you hold this so that one's going like a, we're going too fast seven three that nah, wasn't bad it was, oh we're doing the fast now Got to read that side. It says maximum or minimum. Maximum or minimum. We're doing the maximum now. A little bit What's less. What's it supposed to take? Seven or eight seconds to go around? Seven to eight seconds. You need to read this. Yeah. You need to read. We'll what, read what was your time there on that last one? Uh, on the, on the right main. Right about seven seconds, but I went a little bit too far. Seven seconds dead on the head. It's a little fast. one so what I would do is just slow that down just a hair so your right roller right roller which one's moving that one that right there okay so you're slowing it down yeah yeah that's a little better you want it to be fast but still be able to control it seven five seven Perfect, five right I like that perfect calibration so you push next now if you noticed we've been adjusting the feeder valve now we're going to adjust the tilt module when you hit next see how it says tilt valve now we're going to do the minimum and the maximum for rotation on the tilt when you tilt. get you got your software i sent it to you right. you need to go through and read all these all right you know, that's in now and right now, being hands-on, this is to show you what's going on. Yeah. You yeah. actually visualize it, saw it happen, you'll understand it better. So now, when I move this, it's probably not going to move. See? I didn't think it was going to. Because the tilt's much more sensitive. So I have to add some to it. I can make this one barely not even look like it's moving. Perfectly, that he'll barely touch that th worm drive or barely touch that thumb wheel and just barely curves as he's coming down. So wonderful. It's accurate, accurate programming. Now we're going to do the maximum for the feeder valve out there. So bump it back straight again. And then now you're ready to start your timer. Just crack the throttle and crack the thumb wheel wide open. Yep. target right between seven and eight seconds sounds good yeah and it's operating nice this pump's really good now we're going to change things and go to minimums on the tilt rotation's done 
We only got eight steps here and you're finished. Okay. That was up there. See how far it was? Yeah. Need to drop it way down. So we need that thing to go nice and. I don't like it jumpy. We don't want it jumpy, but we want it to go as slowly, smoothly as possible. So that joystick is controlling that computer, huh? Yeah. That's cool. That's the wizard. That's the, what the wizard's doing. So. <laughs> He's been wanting it all. So like, so like the wizard is like connected to the computer module and the joysticks. Yeah, it's connected to the machine ECM too. And the machine it's controlling ECM. it also. It's equalizing the flow that your control valve is putting out also. So you're not, you don't hear no hissing. It sounds. It feels much no, smoother now. Here, you're not hearing any hissing. Yeah. I got it full throttle, and before I started, yeah. if I'd have done that, you'd hear this thing hiss like crazy. Me, I because remember. Because all that fluid yeah. would be going to bypass. It'd be going to relief. Yeah. And any time that you're sending fluid to relief, you're just heating fluid up and you're wasting energy. That's literally all you're doing. And I'm really good with that, so let's go to the maximum. This one, this one's usually very, very jerky. This step is for calibration for the feeder, for the wanted maximum speed of the tilt. Four seconds from side to side? From side to side. I usually like to go between three and a half and four. Yeah. We got, I like to go half and it tells you if your ro revolution of rotation takes eight seconds, then the tilt should be from end to end four. They want you to be half yeah. as fast because yep. you got to realize what you're doing and you're always working in unison so that they can spin and curl back and meet at itself meet at the at other the side, side yeah. so right now you probably got about two and a half maybe maybe three seconds watch two and a half seconds two and a half seconds <laughs> So Way too with fast. the right roller, we just go right, left a little bit, slow that shit down. Sometimes you can't equalize them because the cylinder's on one side. The it's cylinder gonna go always faster. pulls. The cylinder always pulls faster it. than it pushes. Yeah, so that's a natural. That's just a so you have to unequalize them on this maneuver. Because this one is 3.8. So the wizard can fix that, huh? You do this right here, right now. See how they're equal? Yeah. You click on that. Now they're not equal. Now I can move this one. It was too fast, wasn't it?
wants me to finish with this one first. This one's too slow. That was too fast. That one, that's 3 8. That's pretty good. Yeah. 3.8. It's this one. Let me click off of that. On this one. Quit sliding away from me. minimum on the tilt valve. I gotta speed it up because it won't even move. It won't even move right now. Let me get it jumping. seconds again?
first step. Well, let me do it. Let me go back. That timer starts Four. over every single time, every right? Every time you touch it. Good. So it constantly keeps track of what you're doing. So now, you can exit out of it. As soon as you exit out of it, hit save. Okay. So you come right out of here. There. Exit. Exit. Save. Save. I'm gonna come down there. Let me just see how things are acting. Now everything went back to normal. Okay. This is now tilt, that's rotate. Back to like it's supposed to be. So it just changes when you go into the wizard. Just when you go into the wizard. Now, what you tell your customer is don't push these thumb wheels all the way over. You just roll your thumb into it barely. You know, they could make it dance by doing this, do that's air digging, you know what I mean? You yeah. don't have any resistance. Yeah. But if they barely touch these thumb wheels, they can make this thing act so smooth. Oh, man. I mean, you get the right operator on here, he'll make this thing just, he can decorate a cake with it. Well, that's the idea. Smooth. Get so, this into a good operator. Yep, so I'm gonna come down below. We're gonna go to each page. And then we're gonna do something else. I'm going to save this to a KXO 57-5 Norfolk Power file. Great. That way, if you're ever doing one of these, I can send you that file, and you upload that from file. You don't have to do none of this. You did the wizard for me. You don't even have to do the wizard. You don't even have to program the joysticks. Yeah. Everything moves over. All that information everything goes right from there. Everything moves over, even the ground pressure sensors. Wonderful. Everything moves over the whole entire fire. Perfect. So let so, me come down there. So anytime you do a Kubota, you should just add them to our I file. Use that, I use that same file. Yeah, because we're going to do 080s, U55s. I think there's U48 so coming in. They're thinking file, about doing one of those. You know, that'd be great. Uh, you know, that, that obviously, you know, I mean, you could probably. So let's start at the beginning. You want to get your camera out? Back here and you zoom in right in on Well, I got a few of them, so that's good. All right. Well, well anyways, fun. let's go to the QSC page. Go ahead and take pictures of that. Done. Here's your setup page. You only got two things to do, and you don't need shear to operate, but you need it if they ever take the tilt rotator off. If the shear's not enabled, they won't be able to hold that. We need to get rid of that fucking button that keeps on. Switch to shear mode. Oh, yeah. That with the tilt rotator off, they can work the thumb, the grapple. A lot of them all have grapple. And that way, you take the tilt rotator off with the grapple on, they can go underneath the water. Okay, next one. This is the important one. Hit your calibration page first. That's with your deadpan settings. All right, go ahead and get it. This is the most important page right here. That's your setup page for setting the joysticks up. That's all the information you need. Now, what I will do is right now I'm going to reach up there and unplug that and I'm going to update the tilt module real quick.
systems right here update program just click on tilt update program that's going to beep five times oh so we're sending all the information to the cabin module now oh, you're sending it to the tilt module that's going to say oh. fault no heartbeat right now yeah just disconnected it. all the information is going to that thing Oh, there's another. The, all the information is going down to That's there. That's the heart. That's, the, That's heart. the heart. When you take that off, it's going to say fault no heartbeat. When you lose control or contact down there, it's going to say fault no heartbeat. If you get a break in the wire, it's going to say fault no heartbeat. But if you take the tilt rotator off purposely, it's going to say fault no heartbeat. You hold that baby button in for 10 seconds, and it'll switch to shear mode. Then you pick your grapple up and operate your grapple without the tilt rotator being on. I get you. That's what you mean by shear mode. It means bi-directional. Bi-directional. Right? Bi-directional. Right now you're running off single direction hydraulic right now. Good. You send it flow down the left, return up the right. When you switch to shear, then you have both directions. You cannot run both directions. It won't let you. You don't have to switch it back from shear. As soon as you pick the tilt rotator up, it'll go back to user one. So it's like having a backhoe valve on, on the end of your excavator arm. That's crazy. Man, he keeps eating, I'm fucking starving. Wait, so what are we, oh, we gotta wait for this to update. 40% there. Machine. When it said TM tilt module, yep. then you're programming the tilt module. That's why we had to do it, to, like, kind of seem like we did it yeah, twice. You did it twice. Yep. Yeah, you're doing I it twice. It. You're programming the max, max minimums and maximums mm -hmm. on the cabin module and the tilt module. Yeah, so they okay. all communicate evenly. And really, we weren't programming so much the tilt module, we were programming the thumb wheels to communicate with your ECM to tell your uh, control valve what to do. Perfect. The control manifold, the pilot manifold, is telling that spool how far to go back and forth. And if you noticed, the cabin module goes very quick. I always say smoke if you got them when you start to tilt, because the tilt's got a lot more information. So what we're going to do here then, as soon as we are finished, this machine is 100% done. As soon as we plug that back in, I will save the file. Great. And when you get yourself a computer, and you yeah. want me to send you the file, if you're doing another KX-27, yeah. say, Brett, send me that file. All, All right. you have to do, and I'll show you how to do it here as soon as this is done. So I gotta get a computer. I gotta. I gotta. You sent me that file. I have to download. You already have all the information. Because that doesn't go on my cell phone. Well, I did download the NCON. You can do it. You can, I did you download can the app. You can Bluetooth to that. I haven't gone into the app yet, but I did download it. Is there any reason I need that? You guys That's have that. That's for app? the DC2. Yeah, if you ever want to. Uh, let me kind of up here. If you ever want to uh, Bluetooth to the module, yeah. Good. Use the ignition switch, restart the cabin module, and then press OK. You're all over that. Oh, we gotta wait again? Ready? Cabin module. Plugs it back in. You guys make it look so easy. It is easy. It really is. Okay. We'll find out. You'll get used to it. I know I'll get used to it. But there's never been such an install. So just exit out of this. So when I send you a file... Every time we exit, don't we save? We, are, we didn't do anything to save We didn't again. do nothing. Okay, good. Save the file. So 
right here, I'll put a AX057-5. Yes, sir. And then we'll put... No folk power where the girls don't drink, don't smoke, nor folk. <laughs> save the file. Okay, now, say that you just finished one. You just got, you just finished doing everything, got it all set up, cabin modules in, and your all the wires are still hanging out because you want to test it yet. Yeah. You never button anything up. Until you're 100% operational, cuppers open and everything's open, all your uh, em emulation cards are green. Mm -hmm. Then you come right over here to file and you put load from file. Mm -hmm. And it would overwrite the parameters if I do this, so I'm not going to do it on here. Yep. But I could go back and hit OK then I could go back and grab that KXO57 file yep. that you got in an email, mm -hmm. and you could hit double click on that, and it would load right to that. that sounds good. And everything that we just programmed here mm -hmm. would go to that machine that you're doing. That sounds great. But I still, even though I got files, yeah. I still like to be. Uh, it gives you a little. Sitting in every machine and I will just dial it's them It's only it. a few minutes to run through the wizard. Uh, it and then is. you get then you really get a feel for plus programming. You know you did it right. Plus programming and everything. Yeah. But once you get a reputation, say you got three of them to do. Well yeah, sure. You know, and the customer says, hey I bought three of these, I want end cons on them all, then you just load them files. Well because then you have a feel then I mean yeah sure. Right. Yeah. After a little while. Yeah. Yep. adjust everything right here I can move these up and down and backwards faster slower but it's not in the wizard and the wizards not talking to the machines ECM saying back down the flow he doesn't want as much because mm -hmm. if you start putting too much GPM out you're gonna start hearing hissing if you slow it down there Ooh. and you're not slowing it down here it's gonna still put out 15 GPM, but it's only requiring 9 GPM. So you're going to lose 6 GPM back to relief. And after a whole day of doing that, that fluid gets yeah. hot going through relief. No, I remember. And you're just wasting energy. When you first were starting to run it, it did. I could feel it like bouncy and jerky. Yeah. Then towards the end, I mean, it's smooth as butter now. It does smooth it out. It, its flow shares everything equally. That's what the wizard. So I turn the machine off. Actually, no. Yeah. I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to disconnect right now and let you guys play for a few. Yeah. And then we're going to get some real pictures because we weren't done with the pictures we took the other day. But the computers, we're all good with the computer? Actually, if you anybody want anything to do with the computer now. I guess we just got to learn the hard way. Well, hopefully I got good footage and photos of all this stuff, sir. So. You did great. Thank you. There's my new baby double sucker right there, 128 cubic inch. Oh my god, huh? She's that's beast. quite the man town. <laughs> that's, that's a drag race bike. Yeah, exactly. That's what so I race. That's what you I do. only I only you do drag, drag race. Yep. No, I, I got both these though. Now you see this is a regular. It's not a smart. They just came up with this technology. See how much bigger this one is? Oh, you know what? I gotta put this in Kubota mode. It's got a transmit. Oh, we 
hit the button. Shutting it down. You want to jump off, everybody? Yeah, so you're running. Yeah, you're running it back. Yeah. Oh. I'll put it back. I don't. Right there. It. it doesn't matter. I ran the other one yesterday. I had, I had my fun. I've I've already scratched up all the old carpet that's been on this floor. I so. Know. 